Is it a good idea to put a Burr deal on your credit card? Jason, this is your video. Let's dive in. For the price, I mean, this is actually a really nice house. A little bit more rough, a little more ragged. It's gonna keep those values high. Here's quarter mile comps. There's $260,000 houses right down the street. You'll be able to put your offer through me, and then after you close, Holden Wise, we can handle the property management. We'll even be able to help you with the insurance. We have lenders who will write loans for investors in all 50 states. This deal is 100% James Wise approved. James Wise denied. Hey, real estate investors, welcome to another episode of the MLS Search and Analysis Show here on Holton Wise TV. As always, I am your host, James Wise, and this show, folks, this is the show where I work with you guys one-on-one -on -one to help you guys invest in real estate in the Cleveland market. Sometimes I do due diligence on properties you've already found. Sometimes you tell me what your situation is, what your goals are, and then I go out and I find those properties for you that closest meet those needs, right? And my dude, Jason. Jason is living in the San Francisco Bay Area, and this is his first in investment in real estate. Jason, what you want to do, you want to do a Burr deal. Burr is a B and four R's. Buy, renovate, rent, refinance, and repeat. What that means is you get all of your money back out or some of your money. A lot of people seem to think that they could just do these Burr deals and there's just a ton of them out there and you get all your money back. It doesn't necessarily work that way, but I have found a pretty sweet deal where we get a bunch of Jason's money back out. Speaking of Jason's money, Jason, I am a little nervous on how you're planning on doing some of these Burr deals because at first you told me that... Uh, you are looking to spend approximately 120000 or so, okay? And that's all your funds, right? You have $30,000 available to you in a home equity line of credit, another $20,000 available to you in cash. So you have $50,000. That's fairly safe money. That's, that's pretty smart. But then the rest of your funds, you have $70,000 uh, available to you in low-interest credit cards. Now, I am not going to lie I've actually even done a video talking about this. I'll put it in the show notes for you guys if you want to check it out. I bought one of my first ever properties using a credit card. Okay, in that video, I teach you guys 10 ways to get the money you need to do your deals. So check that out. But I am not going to tell anybody that uh, buying properties on credit cards is safe or low risk. It's, it's a very high risk thing to do. So... The particular property I have found for you, Jason, you're going to have to put a little bit of this money on your credit cards, but I am definitely not advocating you drop $70,000 on your lines of credit, your commercial credit cards, uh, in an effort to do real estate. I think that is incredibly high risk. In addition to that, your strategy is to do a bird deal, so... The biggest thing with you doing a bird deal is you need to be able to refinance. You got to be able to pull all the money back out. But if you spend all of your $20,000 in cash, you do a $30,000 home equity line of credit, and you max out all your credit cards at $70,000, I think your debt to income ratio is going to be all screwed up. And I would be afraid that you can't actually then go and get a 30 year mortgage if you're completely maxed out like that. So if you haven't already talked to a lender, or you want to talk to more lenders to discuss this with them further to get an idea of what you'll actually be able to qualify for at that time. If if you add all this additional debt, you know, shoot us an email, sales at holdenwise.com, and ask us for our list of lenders. And my team, they'll get that list out to you, and you could talk to these lenders. Because the worst thing you could do, bro, would be to completely max out those credit card lines and then find out because you did it, you can't actually get a 30-year mortgage. So with all of that in mind, the property I found for you is going to fall much lower on the pricing spectrum. And you said that you were totally down to do Section 8, and you also said you were good with C-class opportunities. So this particular property checks both of those boxes because I think it would be a great C-class property that would work really well. Uh, with the Section 8 program. So the address is 4137 Valley, Cleveland, Ohio, 44109. 
listed at $59,900. And it says right here, days on market, 20 days. But that is a little bit misleading. It is not uh, actually something that they're just trying to sell. As a matter of fact, I know the particular seller of this property. He's a real estate agent working at EXP Realty. And this dude has uh, been on and off trying to sell this property for a couple years. Um, the market was a lot softer a few years ago when he was trying to sell it, and he was trying to sell it for even less. I think he was trying to get like thirty nine or 40000 for it back then, but it never sold. And uh, I know because he had tried to get me to sell it for him a few times. And I don't sell property for anybody unless, uh, A, you pay me 7% to list the property for you, or B, I do an analysis for one of my clients like you, Jason, and it just makes sense. I don't, you can't just as another agent with a property listed call me up like, yo, James, go sell this property. It doesn't work that way, right? I only sell stuff that I'm the listing agent for, or I only sell stuff in the buyer's agent capacity when I'm doing an analysis. And at that point, I don't care who the sellers are because I work for you as the buyer. So it doesn't matter to me. So that's how I'm familiar with this particular property. And that's um, why I think it might work well for a bird deal because I think he will take less than 59900 just because I know he's tried selling it for less in the past. And if we get it for the price point I want you to get it for, I think it would work. As you can see from the photos, it's not bad. It's you know, it's a pretty decent property. It's got a nice size. Like I said, it's a it's a pretty solid C class neighborhood. As far as you know, dealing with the neighborhood, I, I don't have any issues with this neighborhood. I like it. Yeah, we run into a little bit of riffraff, but it's nothing terrible. As you see here, right, we got we already have the hardwoods throughout the property, okay? Now, they're beat to all hell, so we're going to have to fix those up. And the pictures, you can't really tell from the pictures uh, what the condition of the walls are, but I'm sure there's there's definitely some holes in there that we're going to have to fix up. He got, you know, it looks like we have some newer Home Depot or Lowe's quality cabinetry in that kitchen there. Not the worst thing in the world, but we definitely need to do a little bit of work sprucing it up. It's It definitely needs to be updated for us to be able to burr this thing out. So what I would like to see us do is go into this particular property and just, uh, you know, totally renovate everything on the inside. I'm talking we buff those hardwoods, we paint all the walls a nice agreeable gray, we paint all the trim white. You take this bathroom, you know, this bathroom is pretty gross looking. What we'd want to do is, you know, reglaze this or put a nice one-piece insert, get rid of this nasty-looking 1985 mirror light fixture. Uh, we'll probably improve this. You know, this isn't horrible, but we'll want to replace this with something nicer. Maybe get some low-flow toilets in there so you can keep your water bills even lower. In addition to that... Uh, in his notes, he said that the roof is approximately five years old, so that is not something that you're going to need to worry about doing. But what I would like to do, because I want to take this property, I want to put it as a Section 8 rental property, and in addition, I want, of course, you to be able to maximize the amount of money you pull out of this sucker when you refinance. So what I'd like to do is have you replace all the windows. You're looking at a couple hundred bucks per window. So with all of that included, and maybe assuming between the hot water tank and the furnace, we replace one or both of them, I think we should be in the ballpark of $20,000. That's assuming one of the e either furnace or hot water tank is still good, but I think we'll be approximately $20,000, maybe $25,000, 20 to 25. But if we spend $20 to $25,000 renovating this particular property, what do we get as far as rent? We would probably be able to get, I would guesstimate, $1,100 a month, and this would be Section 8. I want to target Section 8 tenants because they're so much more reliable. I don't really have issues with this particular neighborhood, but you know, non-payment does happen. So if you're in like a C class or below neighborhood, whenever you have the opportunity to go section eight, I think you should. Sometimes people don't like to do section eight because you gotta deal with fixing up more things that you wouldn't normally have to do with a regular cash rental, like the windows, right? You gotta spend about 200 bucks on every single window in this particular house. But in your situation, it makes a lot of sense because you're gonna wanna do that anyway because you're trying to pick this thing up very low you're trying to come in all cash from a motivated seller who's tried selling the thing on and off for several years you just want to get in grab it as is and then boom 
renovate it so we can then get the appraiser to come in with a nice new product and give you the highest possible appraisal. If we go ahead and we buy it cash and then we don't really do anything other than paint it, it's going to be really damn hard to get the bank's appraiser to justify a much higher appraised value. So if we could go to them and be like, look, we did all new windows. We did all new flooring. We did the walls. We did a furnace. We did this. We did that. It makes it a lot easier to get that higher appraised price. So what price do I think you need to get this for? I think you need to pick this thing up at $45,000. Now, I know that's a lot. That's a big, big drop-off from our list price of $59,900. But again, the only reason I think that that could work is I know this particular seller and I know this dude has been trying to get rid of this damn property forever. And, you know, it's not really... It's not set up in a way that it's really attractive uh, to most folks, right? Like, you have two types of people that are trying to buy properties in these neighborhoods. You got investors, and you got folks that are trying to live there. It's probably, I would say, 50-50 on, on who's who. Now, as far as the folks that are trying to live there, when you're trying to live in an area where, and you're trying to buy a $59,000 property, a lot of times those people can be credit challenged, and it's really hard um, to actually get their financing to go through. So then that leaves the investors. And you coming in cash, you know, you're ahead of the game. Not a lot of investors are going to want to spend cash on a property because financing, it's the best move. But you want to try to get in there and do a big old renovation and do a bird deal. So because of all that, I think we got a decent shot at picking this thing up for 45000 So... Twenty to twenty-five thousand dollar rental, so let's just call it twenty for for the sake of this analysis. So that means we would be all into the investment for sixty-five thousand dollars, and we'd be able to rent it to a nice Section Eight tenant at eleven hundred bucks a month. If we did that, what would things look like? Well, we gotta still account for repairs and maintenance, vacancy and non-payment, capex, fifty-five for each of those. Now. Our roof is only five years old, according to what the seller said, so that's something we don't have to worry about for a long time. I don't know what the situation with the furnace or the hot water tank is. I'm hoping at least one of them is still good, and we're probably going to have to replace the other. But to say we replace the hot water tank, we spend 1000 now, you don't got to worry about spending any money on that hot water tank for another 15 years. Or if we were to do the furnace, you spend 3000 now during your reno, you don't have to worry about that furnace for another 30 years. So you're just saving that money for when those things do happen. Next, you got your taxes, 96 a month. After that, you got your insurance, 80 bucks a month is what I anticipate you paying. By the way, if you're not aware, I own a farmer's franchise in addition to my real estate business. And this farmer's business, in addition to being able to sell you guys farmer's insurance, we are independently appointed with a bunch of other random insurance providers that you've probably never heard of. And what that means is we are able to take real estate investors like you and we could shop it around to all these random companies that don't advertise publicly that you don't see out there. And we could just beat your premiums way way down because all we focus on is insurance for landlords and we are licensed in many states so if anybody else out there is watching this video and you've got a portfolio of rental properties you'd like to increase your roi in the show notes below i've got a link to how we can help you lower your insurance costs you want to click that get a quote from my team after that, you got um, lawn care. Cool thing about single-family homes is you don't have to deal with spending any of the money on the lawn care. The tenants, right, as long as you give the tenants a nice single-family home with a way to store the particular pro uh, – with a way to store – their lawn equipment, they're good to go. They'll cut their own grass. Now, this particular property does not have a garage, but you give them one of those nice, like, three, four, five hundred dollar Rubbermaid sheds, boom, they put their lawnmower in there, you're good to go. Water and sewer is something you do have to pay for. I anticipate you paying approximately seventy-five a month. And then property management, we cap it at a hundred bucks per unit. So even though your unit is renting for eleven hundred, you get a little bit of a discount from us. It's only going to be a hundred. So adding all of that up. On average, you should be spending approximately $516 a month to operate this, which would leave you with an average NOI of $584 a month or $7,006 a year. Now, this is where it gets good. This is where the bird deals are, are really enticing. Total investment, if we get it for $45,000 and we can stick to a $20,000 budget, We'd be all into this deal for 65 k You're going to be bringing an 
average NOI of 584 a month. That puts it at a 10.8 cap rate. As far as what it will appraise for, I believe doing that work, getting the windows, making everything beautiful, doing a little bit of the mechanical work, I believe we've got a great shot at getting this property to appraise for $75,000. $10,000 more than what you've got into the particular property. If you got it to appraise for $75,000, that means a lender will give you a 30-year loan, low interest loan, fixed interest loan. They will loan you $56,250. So you put 65 into the deal, you get a loan of 56250 back. That means the only money you have stuck in this deal is $8,750. That is a very small amount of the funds you have available to you. After you pay this new mortgage of 268 a month, you should still be bringing in an NOI of 316 on average or 3790 a year. You'll pay off... You'll, you'll pay off what you've invested in the deal in under three years, and that would be a 43.3% return on your cash. That's why bird deals make so much sense. So, Jason, I think this deal checks all your boxes. In addition, it keeps your initial amount of money low, right? You're only dipping into your $70,000 of credit card debt. You're only dipping into that seventy grand by $15,000, right? So I like that. It feels a lot more responsible to me. I really wouldn't want to stand here and do an analysis where I'm telling you to just freaking put $70,000 on your credit card debt. I, I think that's super, super risky. And, I mean, if you really want to do that, let me know. You know, we'll, of course, do another video. And if you want me to find you a property on the on the higher end of the pricing spectrum you know i can do that but i definitely think as i said earlier you need to talk to a lender to make sure they're actually going to allow you to refinance out number one and then number two i just got to caution you man uh you're a new real estate investor and and that you know you're already down for some risk because you're willing to and you're you living in the san francisco bay area and you're willing to invest all the way out here in cleveland right that's that's a fairly risky proposition number one number two you're down to buy properties cash that's pretty risky and then you couple that with just plowing it all into credit card debt man i think that's super super risky now i've taken risks and they've paid off i've taken risks and uh, i got kicked in the teeth it, it happens so I just think uh, as your real estate broker, it's, it's my responsibility to let you know how risky that is. And I would caution you to, to lower the risk, get a property like this where we don't spend too much money. And then if all goes well, you know, maybe we'll increase the risk on the second deal or the third deal or the fourth deal, right? You could always, always, always go out there, jump into the arena and take more risks, man. The, the, the risks, the deals, they're always going to be out there. Um, I don't necessarily think you need to go from zero to 60 immediately, but uh, that's just me. Uh, let us know how you want to handle it. If you want us to submit an offer to the seller, just send my team an email, sales at holtonwise.com. Let us know what bid you'd like to offer. And, of course, we'll be able to make your contract contingent on a third-party inspection. And we will, of course, be able to coordinate all that. And we'll be negotiating with that seller on your behalf, trying to beat that price all the way down to 45 k That's everything I've got for you today. As always, I'm James Wise with Holton Wise, and this is Real Estate Investing Made Easy. For the price, I mean, this is actually a really nice house. A little bit more rough, a little more ragged. It's going to keep those values high. Here's quarter mile comps. There's $260,000 houses right down the street. You'll be able to put your offer through me, and then after you close, Holton Wise, we can handle the property management. We'll even be able to help you with the insurance. We have lenders who will write loans for investors in all 50 states. This deal is 100% James Wise approved. James Wise denied. Based in Indianapolis, Indiana, FS Houses is the premier investment property brokerage with an in-house property management department that can take care of all those unwanted landlord headaches, FS Houses can offer you the complete turnkey solution as well as wholesale properties offered to you at a discounted rate. 
With a network of thousands of active investors, wholesalers, and brokers, FS Houses can help you sell your property for top dollar on the open market or in a hurry to motivated investors seeking distressed real estate. Visit FSHouses.com or call 317-492-9025 for more information on the Indianapolis, Indiana real estate. Cleveland, Ohio is widely considered to be one of the top rental markets in the entire United States. This is because here in Cleveland, our housing prices are low and our rental prices and demand are high. At Holton Wise, we provide the complete turnkey solution for all real estate investors, whether they are local, out of state, or even abroad. As real estate brokers, we will provide you with agent representation to help you buy properties ranging from single family homes to large apartment complexes. We even have referrals for lenders who can provide investment property loans to investors located in all 50 states, allowing you to capitalize on the use of leverage or other people's money. We have referrals to top-notch title companies so you know that all of your transactions are safe and secure, with every single property being delivered to you with clear title. Once you close on the property, we have an investor-focused insurance brokerage who can handle all your property insurance needs. This insurance brokerage handles auto, home, life, and business policies, but they specialize in working with policies for landlords. We also have full service property management. We can handle all rental property advertisements, tenant placement, rent collection, evictions, maintenance, landscaping, construction, and repairs. In addition, Holton Wise also offers digital media and education. One day, when you are ready to sell your investment, Holton Wise, as the number one seller of investment properties in the greater Cleveland area, can market your property in a video just like this one to our worldwide base of investors who are looking to capitalize on the high cash flow opportunities in the Cleveland, Ohio market. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on our latest content, including video tours and analysis of investment properties that are available for sale, real estate investment education, and our most interesting encounters with tenants from hell. Holton Wise, real estate investing made easy.